Hello everyone. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can do AI assisted bioimage analysis with the powerful model from OpenAI. As you might heard, GPT-3 is a natural language model uh, consists of 175 billion parameters. So it's a really massive model and it has been trained on more than 40 terabyte of text from the internet. It's a powerful model that can generate high quality text. And later on, they have made Codex, which is a model trained in with additional data from, for example, GitHub and for generating code. So what it can do is that you can give uh, instructions, for example, in English, and then it can generate uh, code in, for example, Python or JavaScript, and it can handle more than 10 type of programming languages, for example. Uh, in this case, we're gonna show you a tool we made on top of Codex, and it can take English instructions and generate Python code for performing bioimage analysis tasks, for example, segmentation or feature instructions, extractions. Uh, hopefully this will give you a taste of the future. As a disclaimer, this demo has not yet been approved by OpenAI for launching, and this video has been recorded offline. I will start by showing you uh, this uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, extension we made for Codex. So what this tool does is that we can take instructions from the user in English, for example, and then the English text gonna send to the Codex server uh, hosted uh, by OpenAI. And then the um, um, Codex model gonna generate a source code in Python in this case. And then um, the code is gonna be executed in this notebook environment. Um, to make this really work, it's important that in addition to the instructions we um, sent to the server, there's another chunk of text called prompt need to be sent together with the instructions to make sure the model knows what we want. So here's an example of the um, uh, prompt. For, for example, for image segmentation in cell post. So prompt, in this prompt, you can actually see what we have, right? So for example, I say, I start with this um, empty Jupyter notebook and with a Python 3 kernel. So basically this tells the codex model that the generated code should be in Python 3 syntax. And then also the libraries should be compiled with Jupyter Notebook, for example. And then there are other instructions telling it how we can, uh, for example, how the instructions and comment um, written in the Jupyter Notebook environment. And then um, we also made some suggestions for the code generation, for example, to display an image and plot and chat. And we suggested to use Matplotlib instead of IPython display, for example. Um, for example, we also give an um, example for getting an image from the human protein atlas, right? So this you will see later that how we can use this uh, hint to the model. And then suggestions for um, manipulating pixels, we suggested to use NumPy or scikit image. In addition to the standard libraries, we can also tell the model to use our custom API. For example, in this case, we tell the model that it can use um, the BioEngine server, which is a server developed by us for running deep learning models. And we tell it how to generate the code, for example, how to import the library uh, to interact with our deep learning server. And then we also tell it how to, what models are available on the server for it to use. Uh, in this case, it's for image segmentation, for example, the cell post model for image and annotation. Um, and this basically um, are the prompt instruction for the model. And 
So each time when I type an in instruction here, and the instruction is going to be sent together with the prompt to the OpenAI server. So let's give it a try. So as a simple start, I can say, say hello world. Then I say execute. And then it can generate, as you can see that, this is the instruction we sent to the server. And then this is the um, code generated by the codex model. And then this is the execution, the output of the, um, after executing this code in the Jupyter Notebook environment. So now we can try um, display an image. I can also, um, let's see, display an image from HPA. So HPA is the human protein atlas. Because in the prompt, we already told it how to get an example image from the um, human protein atlas. Um, and as you can see, that is also display this image with uh, MATLAB, including importing the library and read the image and then display the image, for example. <clears throat> so now, for example, we can say um, display the red channel image, for example, right? And then, yeah, so now it knows the zero. Um, and then I can also say now, for example, if we want to do segmentation on this image, right? Because we already told it in this prompt, we already told it how to do segmentation with our file engine, right? So what we can do is that we say, um, segment the image with um, cell post by the bio engine. And then hopefully it will use the code. Um, let's see. Yeah, so let's see. Yeah, so it, now it's executing. So basically what it, it happens is that it's going to read the image and then um, run this um, execute function and it will send this image to the server and this is the server URL and then it's going to return with the result and here in this case because it's a segmentation task what we're going to get is the mask and then it also display the mask right uh, so in this case um, what happens is that because of the um, parameter is not um, good because the image we get is to the cells inside it are too big, right? So you see here that one cell are uh, actually very big. Um, and in this case, we can change the parameter. If you use cell post before, you might know that there's a parameter called diameter, which is important. For example, I can tell you to use uh, diameter equal to 150, for example, right? and then, and hopefully it will get a better result. And then it's generate the code and change the diameter to 150. Yeah, now we get better result, but still doesn't, the segmented mask doesn't cover the actual uh, cells. So it means we need a bigger image, a bigger ones, for example. So we can also try a very vague um, instruction. For example, try uh, try 300, right? for example. And here it's very vague because we don't even specify uh, what, what, what we want to set to 300. But it actually understand it because we have this context. And now it's trying 300, right? So actually now the result is pretty good. So you can see that the uh, cells are actually um, segmented very well. Um, so now as a next step, for example, we can also do some feature extraction with the mask, right? So um, for example, let's see, get the um, get morpho logical mask. 
Yeah, so now I use this uh, measure to get the morphological features from the mask. However, and there's something wrong with this. Um, let's see. Get the morphological mask. Yeah, so here the problem is that uh, we don't have a mean intensity in this. Um, like for example, in this case, we can do get the morphological without without in mean intensity, and then we can try it again. I can I can also do let's see if I remove this. Yeah. Yeah. So now now it uh, actually get that. Um. It gives us a lot of different properties here. Um, and now we can say, display the props as a table. And thus table. Let's see. This is, so it's now create a date frame, right? So save. Oops, the data frame. Um, let's see. Yeah, so now we get DF, the same thing, but it's just saved into a variable. Um, so now what's more interesting is that if we can, we can do some plot with these features from the image, for example. Um, make a scatter plot with, for example, eccentricity and then um, parameters. Yeah, so you can see that it uh, create a scatter plot and then um we may even made a plot for the um features extracted all right so that's it for the demo and as you can see from the demo i did not type any of the code but only the english instructions although sometimes i need to uh give another instruction uh, with more accurate description um, and, but in most of the cases, it does give you what you want, right? Um, I think the implication is huge in the future. Um, it can either reduce or completely remove the requirement of programming. Hopefully with the next generation of Codex, for example. Um, and in the meantime, I think it can also help programmers who have the expertise or data scientists, for example, uh, to improve their efficiency, right? Because you don't need to go to Stack Overflow that frequently, and then you can type and Codex will give the right suggestions, right? And there's another tool called Google Copilot, which does exactly like that. And it's, I have been trying this for a while now, and it's, it's quite enjoyable in many cases. Uh, especially when you have a very repetitive pattern in code and then codex becomes really helpful. Um, and the other thing is that I think um, it opens door for the design of the next generation software. For example, in the context of bioimage analysis software, uh, conventionally we have, uh, for example, ImageJ, which is a very classical uh, image analysis software. Um, but the problem of this software is that it's trying to be more flexible. And as a result, you've got a lot of options and then very complex manual items in, um, in the interface. And you can easily get lost in a jungle of manual submenus, for example. Um, when in the case of uh, Codex, right, it's simplified everything into this very simple prompt. And it still gives you a lot of flexibility because you can uh, just ask what you want, 
right? And I think it's gonna be become very uh, helpful in the future to keep the software powerful, but still um, make sure that user interface is user friendly or it can be combined, right? For example, if you have a prompt, when you type something, it generates a subset of the UI and then the user can click that on that subset and to reduce the requirement of, you know, uh, having everything cluttered together and then, you know, becomes, you know, very hard to use. I think that's it. And um, hopefully you enjoy the video and um, yeah, feel free to follow us on Twitter. If you are interested in trying the demo and you need to first get access to the OpenAI Codex by joining the waitlist on this page, for example. And then you will get an API token. And with the API token, you can fill in here, right? And then in order to download and install this uh, Codex extension, and you need to go to this Codex chat notebook, which I made. Um, and here you can find the instructions how to do just pip install this extension uh, within Jupyter Lab, and then you will be able to see this interface and then you need to paste your api token here and then you can try with whatever um you know i show in this demo yourself um and here in in this um you can also take a look at this codex prompt repository which right now we only have three but the idea is that uh three type of prompt but ideas that we can extend that further uh, such that the codex can become more useful for different contexts. Thank you.